good day everybody today is saturday the 11th 11th of april and it is easter saturday i was actually going to do this video on thursday because thursday was for peter rabbit but i wasn't quite up to doing it so i thought i will do it today and today we have a special book today of course we have I won't show you the book yet. Of course, we have little Peter Rabbit. If you haven't seen him, this is my Silicon Bunny, which I got off Etsy. He's such a cutie. He is a cutie. He's sitting up here with everybody else. And I've got, hang on, I've got, that. got this little bunny, which I purchased last Easter when I went up north for a holiday. I thought I'll bring her in. And of usual, oh yuck, wind got caught. And I have got my little mini mouse. She is so cute. And I have got Leo. Yeah, Leo and little Blossom sitting out in the corner. She is sleeping very peacefully. And of course, the one and only Garfield. He is in here. He wants to get among everything and he, he's ready for this story. Because this story is. The Tale of Peter Rabbit. This is by Beatrix Potter, illustrated by Cindy Zekas. And this is a little golden book. And this was given to me by a little girl by the name of Sarah Thompson. She passed away, must be coming up four years ago now. And she gave me this little book. So Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and the names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mrs. Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Ooh. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She brought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail were good little bunnies and went down the lane to gather blackberries. Mmm, blackberries. No, don't like them. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Ooh, he only just made it. Look at him. He only just made it, people. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans. Then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. I thought, after a mixture of those, no wonder he's feeling sick. But round the bend of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully, dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. Poe's being frightened, just, he just forgot which way he had to go. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately ran into a gooseberry net and got caught by large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons and quite new. Okay, if he's got a new jacket, and he, and he lost it. 
And he goes home without his jacket. What is his mum going to say? Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears. Poor Peter. But his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. <gasps> now, weren't they good birds, birds, helping him get free? Mr. McGregor came along with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon top of Peter. But Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind, behind him, and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had, had not had so much water in it. Mm. Looks like Peter's in for a bath, eh? See? See his ears in the watering can? Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Ah, choo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor and he was tired of running after Peter. So he went back to his work. Wasn't Peter lucky? Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright. And he had not, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in that can. <gasps> Poor Peter. He's lost and wet and tired. <sighs> after, after a time, he began to wander back, going, Lippity, lippity, not very fast and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked. And there was no room for the little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse came running in and, and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her, her head at him. Peter began to cry. Poor Peter, he was stuck. We hope he gets home soon. Hope he finds his way out of the garden. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came, upon the, came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking at her, but he heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went backwards to the tool shed, but suddenly quite close to him, he heard the, the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scratch. Peter scuttled underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon the wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing young onions. His back was turned towards Peter and beyond him was the gate. Oh, this is what Peter's looking for. He's got to get through that gate, hasn't he? Mm. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight line behind some current bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. 
He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Oh, poor Peter. Look at his jacket. Hey? Look at his jacket, people. It's Peter's jacket. Now he's running around in the nude. Poor rabbit. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got to the big fir tree. Thank goodness he got away. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was a second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Peter. Mm. Seems like he's always losing his clothes. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave him a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon would be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy and Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and black currants for supper. Oh, poor Peter. And that is the end. Well, I hope Peter will get better. I hope he will learn not to eat so many different veggies, crazy veggies at one time. Hey, don't worry, little Peter up here. You're safe. So that's the story for today. Actually, the other week I actually seen the movie of Peter Rabbit. Um, and I had never seen it before and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And thoroughly enjoyed it. I might watch it again later. Hmm, so what, oh, watch out Garfield. Sorry about that. Yeah. So that's the story for today. I kept this one, as I said, this is about Peter Rabbit and the rabbits are good for Easter. And I will let you know that the Easter rabbit has been given the authority that he can still go out and deliver his Easter eggs this Easter. Otherwise, there will be so many boys and girls out there that will be crying because the Easter buddy will come. But he's lucky he's a rabbit and not a human because hopefully he'll wear a mask so he won't get the germs that are flying around with this virus. But thankfully, they have, he has been given permission to go and do his yearly run of Easter eggs, which is good. Mm, I did have Easter eggs. But the other night, I just ate them all. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that little storybook. As I said, this is The Pet Tale of Peter Rabbit. It's a Beatrix Potter book. Um, this is golden books, little golden books. That I'm not quite sure. Yeah, there must be all over the place. There are more than 200 timeless little golden books to share. Aren't the... God. Yeah, as I said at the beginning, this was given to me by a little girl by the name of Sarah Thompson. I think it's coming up before years in June that she passed away. Um, I had never met Sarah. Um, I only knew of her through my ex. Um, and Sarah and I had the same birthday. Um, I never did get to meet her. Um... She was five, I think, when she passed away. She had only just started school, her first year in the kindergarten. And, whew, yes. So I hope everybody, I'm sure, I hope Sarah, I hope you're here with me and your mummy and your puppy are here looking after and with me reading this story that my babies and my putty tat into my rabbit. I hope you are looking over us. Um, I'm sorry that everything, I'm sorry that we never got to meet each other. I'm sorry that you'd passed away so young. So everybody out there, be grateful for whatever age you are. 
be proud of your age because you never know when let me say this again be proud because there are a lot out there who do not get to that age as i said sarah was either five or six so she never got to experience a lot in life um she did have um she was having seizures she was in hospital for a while and how i heard how i heard had she passed she was she was in foster care because her mum had passed away um and the lady had just given her a bath and sarah got out the tub and instead of instead of just walking she ran and she slipped on the tiles and hit her head and that was really was it you know she was having seizures before that and and that's what got her in the end so everybody out there for you you've got children harm your children's your children every day hug them give them tell them you love them um and just live each day to the fullest enjoy them give them new insights give them new things to discover and at the moment is a bit hard you know with what's going on but i don't know watch different movies with a movie they haven't seen bambi i've, I've got the bambi book here i read that did i read that last year i think it was i'm see what see what i've got to read what i'm fine to read next week so that's it for my video today i hope you've enjoyed the video with these little babies each week it's hard to decide which one i'm going to get i thought i had to have little peter peter had to come into this story and my little rabbit he had to come in she had to come in she thought she was so cute i said i got her last year i've had her for 12 months now and as always garfield has got to be oh excuse me oh. watch out peter there. so he's got the wants to say goodbye to you he's hope we all hope you in my home here hope you all have a beautiful and happy easter and eat as many easter eggs as you want you know we never know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day so enjoy life as it is enjoy every day and live every day to the fullest so we will see you again in the next video which will be tomorrow because it's sunday chat so I will see you then. And Garth would like to give you all a hug. And he would like to welcome any new subscribers I've got in the last in the last week. I know I've got two. Um I cannot think of the name offhand, but I do welcome you to my channel, to my crazy channel. And I thought, like always, Garfield would like to say goodbye at the end, and he likes to give everybody a Garfield hug. So everybody out there, have a great day wherever you are in this beautiful world and stay safe. Stay home. Do not, if you don't need to leave your house, stay home, stay isolated. This is, I reckon, the only way that we can actually beat this. The less people out there, the less people, more people, less people are going to get this virus that is going around. So everybody, thank you again. And Garf, oops, sorry, nearly knocked it over. So Garfield wants to give you all a hug. Kiss first. Huggy, 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 huggy. One other one? Okay, one more. Huggy, 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 huggy. So that's it, everybody. I will see you tomorrow in my next video. Bye. 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 <laughs>